Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. In this video, you're going to learn how to add negative keywords to your Google Shopping campaigns. Adding negative keywords is one of the core ways to optimize your Google Shopping campaigns and to get more sales and more profits. We do this to tell Google not to show our ads when a shopper uses certain words in their search. I'm going to talk about why you want to add negative keywords, how to do it, and then I'm going to share with you the best way to find which negative keywords to add. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about why we add negative keywords. When we create a Google Shopping campaign, we don't get to set up which keywords we actually want to target. Google shows our shopping ads based on the product data in our product feed. If Google thinks our product is relevant to the search, it's going to show our ad. Google can, and certainly will, make mistakes when showing our ads to different people. Adding negative keywords is our tool to prevent this as much as possible. For example, let's say you're selling a basic wooden chair. You wouldn't want to show your ad for searches that include things like plastic, metal, or upholstered. Now, this isn't to say that you can't get a sale from people that use these search queries, but it is much less likely. When you're just getting started with your Google Shopping campaigns, you want to focus on getting clicks from shoppers who are more likely to convert into a sale. We don't want to leave it all to Google's optimization algorithms. These can burn through our budget unnecessarily. And that's what negative keywords are for. Now, let's walk through the process for adding negative keywords. You can add them at the account level, the campaign level, or the ad group level. I'm going to talk about the account level first and show you how to add them there. Account level negative keywords cover all the campaigns that are in your account. That means that you want to be very careful about what you add at the account level as a negative keyword. For example, let's say that you sell guitars, but you don't sell any Gibson brand name guitars. You may be tempted to put that word Gibson as a negative keyword at the account level. There would be two issues with that. Firstly, some people might be searching for best alternative to Gibson guitars. In this case, you might have a great product or content for them. Second, you might be selling Gibson guitars sometime in the future. You don't want to have to remember that you added this negative keyword at the account level some time ago. With that warning given, there are many times where an account level negative keyword is the way to go. Let's say that you find a lot of people searching for toy guitar that's triggering your ads, or how to make your own guitar. You know that your store will never really have good probability or enough conversions from these customers. So an account level negative keyword is perfect. Let me show you how to do it. Starting in your Google Ads account, go to the admin on the left here. Then go to account settings, and here for the full account, you'll see the negative keywords. Simply enter your negatives each on a new line, and then click save. Now, did you notice what I did when adding those negatives? I added quotes around them, which turned them into phrase match negatives. It's very important to know about match types and how they affect the logic of negatives blocking search queries. Match types affect the logic of how Google blocks search terms from showing your ads. There are three types of negative keyword match types, broad, phrase, and exact. Broad is just where you add the negative keyword as is. For example, let's use red shoes. If you add red shoes as a negative broad match keyword, any search query containing red and shoes will not trigger your ad. So if someone searches for where to buy shoes that are red online, your ads won't be shown. To set your negative keyword as a broad match, you just enter it in the box here as is, with no special characters enclosing it. A phrase match keyword such as quotation mark red shoes quotation mark will only prevent your ad being shown if you have red shoes as an intact phrase. So your ad will still show for search queries such as buy shoes red, but it won't show for buy red shoes. Finally, exact match is much more straightforward. If you enclose red shoes in square brackets like this, then only an exact search of red shoes will be blocked. Buy red shoes or even red shoe will still trigger your ads for showing in the results. We recommend using a mix of these match types depending on the query that you're trying to stop. For example, if we're adding a negative keyword for a product group that just has white shoes, of course, we'd add a phrase match negative keyword for red so we don't show for any search queries that have red in them. I'll show you an example of how we can use all three match types while I walk through how to set up negatives at the campaign and ad group level. Okay, let's say you're selling a product like this. It's got a bear with some bear prints as its design and it's a welcome mat. So go into your shopping campaign that you're selling it from. Then specifically go into the ad group that it's in. You want to open up insights and reports if it's not already open and go to search terms. 
Now you're reviewing search terms based on the time frame that you've set up. You can see here that you've got a lot of terms that Google thought might be relevant to this product, but aren't very qualified. Again, when I say qualified, I mean search terms that show a good probability that the shopper is looking for this type of product and not something else. So the search term bear print. Certainly this is a relevant search, but it isn't quite what I'd call qualified. We probably want the shopper to be searching for an actual mat. So we could add this as a negative keyword, either at the ad group level or the campaign level or a negative keyword list. For this negative, we're just going to add it at the ad group level here and we'll keep it as a default match type that Google assigned here, which is exact match negative. So I'm telling Google that when a search term is the words bear print, I don't want to bid to have my ad shown. It's simply too general of a term and has a low probability of converting to a sale for my welcome mat. So we're going to save and that has now been excluded at the ad group level. Now we see here for bear tracks in mud, that's definitely not qualified for our product. So I'm going to click that and add it as a negative, but I'm going to add just mud as a phrase match. This is because most searches with the word mud in them are likely to have to do with coming across bear tracks in the wild or hunting bears or something like that. Again, this is not relevant to our product. Shopping campaigns are best directed at people who use the product type, in this case, a mat or a rug in the search query. And now we see here, picture of a bear print. Well, we see these kinds of words all the time in unqualified searches for e-commerce. So I'm going to add this, but I'm going to add the word picture as a broad match negative. We're not selling photos or prints for a wall or illustrations. So I'm going to put picture as a broad match and hope that it takes care of any variations of that word. So that's how we use the three different types of negative match types that we can use to better filter the search traffic we show ads for. Now, I mentioned that I see the word picture all the time in search queries in e-commerce. These words are common in search queries when people seem to be researching or looking for images for inspiration. There are a ton of words that my team and I have seen time and time again that highly indicate a low probability of a person purchasing from an e-commerce store. For most new campaigns, we'll add a pre-existing list of negative keywords to the campaign as we launch it. This list has a bunch of phrase match negative keywords such as free or stores near me that we'll add as a list. I'm going to give a link to my common list of negative keywords down below so you can download that, access it and add it to your campaigns from the get-go. Okay, so that's how we add negative keywords to our Google Shopping campaigns. This video here is actually part of our free Google Shopping course. It's a free course that shows you everything you need to set up, optimize, and scale your Google Shopping campaigns to over 100K per month. It's completely free, it's on our website. I'll leave a link to it down below. Also, if you're already generating over 20K per month in sales and you wanna to scale to seven figures and beyond, my team and I can help. We use Google Ads, Facebook Ads, and conversion rate optimization to scale dozens of e-commerce stores every single month. Book a time with my team and I down below and we'll show you how we'll do this for your store. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Make sure to click here for the next video in the free course and I'll see you there.